Good morning, everybody. Eugene Bear here. He's hungry. Toast, real butter, raspberry jam, and hot coffee with French vanilla cream. Mm, yum, yum, yum. I'm going to finish that after the teaching. You know, we're not to wage word battles because it doesn't do any good. But we are boldly, we are to preach boldly the truth. Now, you've heard me say, if you've heard some of my teachings, I'm not a Christian. I'm a Christ-anointed, beloved believer. I am a saint son or a son saint. I am an anointed teacher, elect. Many are called, few are chosen. When you're chosen, you're placed with a gift. And I was given a gift when I was called at 30 years old, and I couldn't read a seventh grade reader. And the Lord told me, I'm going to make a teacher out of you, and you're going to teach lawyers and doctors and intelligent people. Now, the battle has been against Christianity, man-centered concept of the Word of God. I'm going to bring something to you today that's meat. And the majority of, their, of you out there will not agree with me. I'm telling you right up front. The truth has always been in a minority. When the Lord came to Israel, the majority of Israel wanted to kill him, including the priesthood and the high priest at that time. They were making plans to kill him. Lord, knowing the hearts of men, he chose 12 apostles, of which he knew one of them. He would open his heart to Satan. Satan would come in to his mind heart, and he would betray the Lord. Uh, the point I want to make here is Peter was sent to Israel. Peter, James, and John were the pillar of the early church in Jerusalem. Paul confronts Peter for dissimulation. You can study that word, look it up, and find out what that's all about at Antioch in Assyria. He withdrew from eating with the Gentiles when some of the Jewish brethren who believed came up from Jerusalem. Okay, <clears throat> Peter sent to the Jews, to Israel. To, well, I won't chase that rabbit. Paul, clearly his ministry is to the Gentiles, you and I. When Paul wrote 14 letters, and Peter said that Paul was given wisdom, Paul said, I have taught you and wrote to you everything the Lord revealed to me in the Arabian desert. I have left nothing out. Okay? So if it's left out, it wasn't important to us. What was left out? Do you know that Paul never used the word bride in teaching to you and I, the Gentiles? Do you know what this is? Most of you use Strong's. No, no problem. I don't care what concordance you use or whether it's on your iPad or on your computer. This is every word, every time it's found in the Bible. And if you would look up bride and bridegroom, you would find out bridegrooms in the Bible more than bride. And when bride is in the Bible, it refers to sons of Israel. And nowhere at any time did Paul use the word bride in all of his writings to us, the Gentiles, and he left nothing out that was important. Where the Christian church tries to get, see, if they can keep you debating the bride, you miss the bridegroom, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying.
trying to stay in tune with the spirit here and I'm saying things that could run off in different directions, all right? I want to make it clear here in the word, the end of the book or the end of Revelation. And if I'm going to start in the very last three verses of Revelation, I've got five minutes here. I've got to say a lot in five minutes. God will take away his share of the tree of life and in the holy city, which is described in this book. Tree of life, holy city. Four different kinds of life. Book of life, eternal life, water of life, tree of life. And tree of life was found way back in the beginning. All right? And why was Adam and Eve kicked out of the garden? And a flaming sword that turned in every direction? And cherubims guarding the entrance? So they wouldn't re-enter and partake of the tree of life and live forever in their sinful, disobedient state. Okay, chase that rabbit. Now, the city is the important thing here. The holy city and New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven, is connected to the bride. All right? Is the bride a female human woman? No. Okay? According to Scripture. Let me read something to you. I'm going to go from the city in 2219 of Revelation to the holy city Jerusalem in 21, 9 through 14. Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven plagues to speak to me, saying, Come, and I will show you the bride. Key word here, two of them. Bride, and I will show you. Show you. What's he going to show John? Is he going to show John a human woman dressed in fine linen, white, she was allowed to wear white, and the word is missing again. Because the wife, the woman in the Old Testament that's Israel, was divorced because of her disobedience and sin. But she's taken back. All right? I read on. Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Now, Christianity tries to get Ephesians, the last chapter, to represent the bride. Paul never used the word bride, and a bride is not represented in the last chapter of Ephesians. It's a husband and a wife and children and a family that's talked about there. Not a bridegroom or a bride. Okay? Bride does not belong to the Gentile church. Okay, I read on. Uh, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Lamb belongs to Old Testament Israel. And in the Spirit, he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me. That's the key word. I got a true witness here. I'm going to show you the bride, and he showed me something. What did he show him? He showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. And from God is found up in 21, 21, 2. New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It's found in 10. Revelation 21, 10. Showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. And the holy city is spoken of with the tree of life and the holy city, which is described in this book. And when the angel showed John the bride, he showed him the holy city. And I read on. Having the glory of God, its radiance like the most rare jewels and like jasper, clear as crystal, 
it had a great high wall and 12 gates and the 12 angels on the 12 gates, the names of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel. This holy city represents the sons of Israel, not Gentiles. Uh, were inscribed on the east three gates and on the north three gates and on the south three gates and on the west three gates and on the walls of the city, the holy city, the new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven. And the walls of the city had 12 foundations and on them the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Were the 12 apostles of the Lamb Gentiles or Jews? Every one of them were Jewish Hebrew men, the 12 apostles of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lamb is no longer a Lamb. He's ascended and seated with mighty power and glory. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah, King of kings and Lord of lords. And he's coming back with a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth that can judge and destroy at the spoken word. Okay, back to what I said earlier. Paul sent to you and I, never use the word bride in 14 letters to you and I. The Christ anointed church is spear it, S-P-I-R dash I-T. It's spirit word, born of the spirit to see and enter. The assembly is born of the Holy Spirit of truth. The uniting spirit, Holy Spirit of truth, is what unites the Gentile, Christ-anointed believers that believe the truth. And the Gentile believers today are not a bride. Love you. I am the truth teacher, the spirit teacher. I have just taught you a meat teaching. And if you are of the Christ-anointed saint sons, beloved believers, this truth will ring true in your heart mind. If you're a Christian in man-centered church, you'll still believe you're a bride when you're not, if you're a Gentile believer. Love you. Bye.